What's up, everybody? Today, I'm going to show you how to prep plastic stuff, right? And we did another video about repairing plastic. So if you've got damage on your plastic stuff, uh, you should probably check that out first because you need to do that part first. This bumper showed up actually. This is a brand new OEM bumper cover for Ford Fiesta. Gotten a little bit of a uh, incident with a rock. And um, this is a brand new bumper cover, but it showed up on the crate with a big gouge right here and a big gouge right here. So I already went ahead and repaired those, got some, uh, some UV primer on those spots and got everything all smoothed out and ready to go. So the rest of this video, I wanna talk to you guys about the actual preparation of the raw bare plastic, right? Um, it's a little bit finicky, um, but a lot of people, you know, mess it up, right? You see those cars driving around all over the place with the big chunks of paint missing off the bumper cover and there's black underneath, right? You can see the bare plastic under there. Um, I can't tell you the number of times I see issues with people and their prep on bumper covers, things just delaminating, um, all types of scary stuff going on. So hopefully after you watch this, you won't have those issues and uh, we'll get your car looking right. The name of the game with prepping plastic is clean, 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 clean. It needs to be clean, right? So a big thing that I'll normally do when I first unwrap a, a bumper cover, brand new bumper cover, is I'll just kind of give it a little feel and also kind of look at it pretty critically, right? Sometimes these bumper covers show up completely coated in mold release agent and nasty stuff like that um, and you'll see that it has almost like this is this is dull now right i've cleaned this a few times already to make sure i got everything off but sometimes they show up like shiny and you can run your hand across it and it feels slick and if you actually take just a little bit of water and uh put it on the bumper cover. See how that sheet's on there like that? That's how it should look, right? But a lot of times when these first show up, you spray some water on there, you'll notice it'll actually beat up. It'll look like the bumper almost has like a coating on it, like a wax or like a ceramic or something. So that's normally a good indication right off the bat that you've got something that needs a lot of cleaning. Um, my normal process is I use actually all three of these. So a regular solvent-based wax and grease remover, a waterborne wax and grease remover, and this is an anti-static cleaner. This one's actually the most important. So if you're just gonna do one of these, I would recommend something like this. Um, this is essentially an alcohol-based cleaner, right? So you could use something like al isopropyl alcohol or something along those lines to get started. The next thing you're gonna do, I would give it an initial wipe down, right? When it first shows up, um, just get the worst of it off, right? Get it pretty decently clean. And then if you're in an area like Tucson, right? Or <laughs> New Mexico or wherever where the sun is super bright and you got a lot of uh, really hot climate year, uh, almost year round, uh, I would put the bumper cover outside in the sun for an hour or two, let it heat up really good. Um, make sure that wherever you have it sitting, it's like kind of in a neutral position. So it's not gonna like melt because <laughs> it does get that hot out here sometimes. Um, but I would at least let it heat up one time. And what that's gonna do is allow those mold release agents to come to the surface of the plastic so that when you clean it, um, you get them all off. Another thing you can use if you don't have access to these products. Um, might catch some flack for this one. I don't know. I don't know. Do we have haters on this channel? I don't know. Let's find out. Uh, OxyClean. The powder OxyClean that comes in a little jar. Mix a little bit of that with some hot water. And that stuff actually cleans off mold release agent and wax and stuff really, really well. You'd be surprised. 
So, name of the game. First step, clean, 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 right? And then we're just gonna put a light mechanical scuff in there. With this stuff, right? If you do not have this product, you could use some water and Dawn dish soap with your gray scotch pad, but it's not the same thing. Um, this actually has a little bit of an abrasive in it as well. And that will um, help with the prep significantly. So it's essentially aiding in the sanding that this does. And then also this has like a foamy action to it. So it helps to bring all those contaminants up to the surface and then you can clean them off. Let's get this scuffed up, scuff stuff, a little bit on the pad, right? Little dollop like so. And I'm gonna dunk it in my water right here. It's just tap water, you know, nothing fancy, no Aquafina, no Glacio or whatever, no, uh, what's, what's that other stuff, Boss, right? just using the good old tap water give it in a dunk we're gonna go around and scuff this thing from top to bottom every nook and cranny and edge and corner make sure you get in there real good and scuff all these little tabs get all the little corners and stuff because that's the spot where you always see people's bumper covers flaking and your bumper cover is not going to be the one that is flaking So what we're looking for here is you want to get a nice, even, uniform scuff on the whole thing. It doesn't need to, you know, some of these spots here, like you can see um, around the primer edge where like it got sanded maybe a little bit too far, but that's okay. Um, that was because I had to use some actual sandpaper on that. But one big thing that I want to fill you guys in on about plastics, right? So. It's really tempting, I understand, for a lot of people, if whether you've painted before and you've had problems like with adhesion on plastic, or maybe you're really trying to avoid that, um, a lot of people just kind of are quick to resort to using like really heavy grit, or what I would consider a heavy grit for a bumper cover, um, is like anything heavier than, I'd say a thousand or eight hundred. Um, with raw plastic, if you go anything heavier than that, so, you know, 500, 320, whatever, um, especially on metallic colors, it's going to show. You're going to get all these nasty, like, scratches and stuff, um, and even if you seal it, it's probably not going to fill them in, and then you're going to have it all swelled back, and you know, these really weird sanding marks and stuff in there, and honestly, you're not doing yourself any favors. The gray scotch pad for most instances especially you know stuff like this where it's just a bare plastic bumper perfect just gray scotch pad that's it right that's all like the mechanical sanding you need in this repair area here so you might have something like this on your bumper cover um this i actually feathered out to 1200 grit and i sanded the primer itself with a thousand so i never used anything very coarse on this so even these scratches that i have on the outside here it looks weird because it's like slightly different color right there um, but these scratches are only 1200 grit scratches so when I go and seal that it's gonna cover over all that stuff just fine it's not gonna leave any of those weird scratch marks or anything in the sealer so everything looks all nice and slick and smooth and that silver is not gonna show any of the weird you know texture and stuff like that so the last thing I want to talk to you guys about is product because what you're putting on top of your bumper cover is just as important as how you prepped it okay so always 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 use adhesion promoter okay my preferred one is this guy right here the og right 
Bulldog, you can't go wrong. There's plenty of other companies that sell, you know, their version of that. Um, they all probably work about the same, but I like that stuff because they actually do offer uh, warranties and stuff, and guarantees with it, which normally means that the product's a little bit better because they're actually willing to stand behind it. Uh, whether or not they would actually, you know, go through with it, that's another question, right? Um, so yeah, always use adhesion promoter. So the last step you're gonna do before you paint it, wipe it down again with your anti-static cleaner. Make sure that the whole thing's nice and clean, free of dust and lint and debris, anything like that. So if you need to, wipe it down with a tack rag. If you have an anti-static gun, um, use that. If you're watching this video, you probably don't have an anti-static gun. So either waterborne cleaner, spray it on the back side of the bumper cover and the front. If you use this on the back of the bumper cover, it will actually help to dissipate a lot of the static. Um, this stuff is a little bit more obviously like job specific, right? Like this will strictly like get rid of that static. Clean it real good. And then you can actually run your hand across the top of it, right? And you'll be able to feel if there's any static chilling anywhere. Once there's no static left, once it's been wiped down, once it's clean, once it's prepped, hit it with that adhesion promoter and then make sure you use some kind of a sealer before you put base coat on. I know that a lot of people will make it sound like the sealer part is optional, but on something like a bumper cover, it's not really optional, okay? Always seal your bumper covers because you need it to guarantee that any stray little scratches or anything are all gonna get covered up, and you also need it for a strong foundation for your paint to stick to, otherwise, you're gonna get rock chips galore. And make sure you throw a little bit of extra clear on there for that protection. I hope that was helpful guys. I hope that your bumper cover came out fantastic and maybe you learned something watching this, maybe you didn't, maybe you have an anti-static gun at home and you watched this video for no reason. Either way, I appreciate you guys watching the videos, so be sure you hit the like if you liked it, the comment, the subscribe, the, you know, everything under the sun, do all of it. Just, just do it all, all right? Take two minutes out of your day. Help us with the channel. We appreciate it greatly. And be on the lookout for the next video. 